What was the boring billion really like? If I said billion, you might think of money, people, or years. Most likely, you wouldn't say boring, but the scientist Martin Brazier came up with the phrase boring billion. He used it to talk about the billion years that happened on Earth between 1.8 and 0.8 billion years ago. So, what did Earth look like during the boring billion? Let's find out. A couple of billion years ago, Earth was very different, from the way the oceans function to the slimy life on land to where land masses were. Almost everything was more extreme than it is today. Things were generally a little odd because the oceans contained a lot of sulfur and little oxygen. The majority of animals would not have been able to survive there. Aside from cyanobacteria and perhaps some lichens, there wasn't much life on land at the time. Even the Earth's interior was much warmer than it is today. But the world was also a little boring for these early creatures. The weather was very consistent. There was little movement of the glaciers and the sun was 5 to 18% weaker than it is today. Under the microbes, even the rocks were remarkably stable. The study of how rock plates move on top of the Earth's mantle, known as plate tectonics, had not yet started. The continental plates were held together to form a supercontinent because the mantle was too hot. Additionally, the plates were weak and thin. The billion years between roughly 1.8 billion and 800 million years ago, when the Earth was extremely stable, were referred to as the boring billion by geologists. The reality is that this time wasn't at all boring. In fact, it opened the door for plate tectonics as we know it today and probably for the existence of life on Earth. The cycle of plate tectonics is currently in motion. As the plates shift, mountains are formed when they collide, shallow seas are formed when they split apart, and even volcanoes are formed when the plates slide under one another. Plate movement is responsible for some of Earth's most notable features, including the Himalayas, the East African Rift Valley, and the Pacific Ring of Fire. It's difficult to imagine what the Earth looked like before plate tectonics were discovered because they are so significant. We need to go back to the end of the Archean Eon or almost 3 billion years ago when Earth was still adjusting to its new shape. Geologists lament the repeated recycling and destruction of a large portion of the rock record due to subduction. A rock slab subducts when it slides beneath another and descends into the mantle where it melts. That indicates that the oldest rocks have been broken up, smashed together, and worn away, leaving little of them behind. However, the Archean rocks that did reach the Earth's surface are dispersed throughout the globe in regions like North America, Australia, Africa, and Eastern Europe. The age of some of these rocks exceed 3 billion years. Because of this, it was challenging for geologists to determine the beginning and characteristics of modern plate tectonics. They searched for evidence of subduction as a sign that plate tectonics began in the past because it is one of the main mechanisms by which it functions today. So, using the few remaining pieces of rock and computer simulations, scientists pieced together what they knew about the Archean over time. By examining the minerals in the rock, geologists can determine how hot it was and how deep a piece of land penetrated the planet. They also discovered that the Earth's lithosphere was extremely active beginning in the late Archean, 2.78 billion years ago. Supercontinents have occasionally split up before coming back together. Mountains were constructed at various points in history. That certainly sounds like plate tectonics, but is it the very first instance of plate tectonics? However, geologists have theories on the subject. Because the Earth's mantle was about 250 degrees Celsius hotter than it is now, plate tectonics did not function in the same way that it does today. The mantle was at its warmest during the Archean, and ever since, it has been gradually cooling. The mantle still held more heat when the Earth was 2.8 billion years old than it does today. The crust was thin, weak, and easily bent due to the high temperatures in the mantle, similar to freshly baked cookies. If there was subduction into the mantle, as evidenced by the history of metamorphic rocks, the sinking crust was not as deep as it is today. Not the same sort of subduction took place. Because of this, some geologists do not believe that this is the first demonstration of plate tectonics. However, these early lithosphere movements assisted in dividing the crust into plates. These plates converged in one spot approximately 1.8 billion years ago, creating the supercontinent Nuna. Therefore, there was no life on land, save for a few tiny organisms. There was only oceanic life. The ocean also wasn't at all like it is now. Two billion years ago, the majority of the ocean likely had very little oxygen. It did, however, contain a significant amount of hydrogen sulfide. And by 1.6 million years ago, Yuxin 
Neutropenia, a dangerous condition for most eukaryotes, organisms with a nucleus inside each cell had developed as a result of this combination of factors. Prokaryotes, which are less complex life forms without an enclosed nucleus, were able to adapt to their unusual environment. Archaea and other microscopic organisms had wonderful lives. And so were cyanobacteria, which could absorb light and feed on the sulfide in the ocean. Sulfur bacteria in both purple and green were also present. These photosynthetic microbes have vivid colors and have the ability to grow soft mats in water. They sound like they would be in a science fiction film, but they actually exist and are still in use today. Prokaryotic cells made up the majority of the life in the boring billion. Scientists believe that this was the stinkiest period on Earth because of the high levels of sulfur in the atmosphere. But because it marked the beginning of sophisticated eukaryotic life, geobiologists, scientists who investigate how the biosphere and physical processes of Earth interact, cannot forget that time. For instance, there are rock formations in China that contain eukaryotic fossils from 1.7 billion to 1.4 billion years ago. Protists and other early eukaryotes were among the majority of these organisms that lived in water. On the early supercontinent, which moved very slowly, life was good. The water was still teeming with slimy mats and microscopic organisms that were attempting to survive in the sulfur. How did we arrive here, let alone at the Cambrian explosion? Therefore, Earth had to appear to change the status quo. And that wasn't the case in the boring billion, at least not in a way that was significant. With small shallow subduction occurring around Nuna and the falling supercontinent, Rodinia, plate tectonics maintained its previous feel of being soft and squishy. The supercontinent's outer plates were largely still, but they began to sink into the mantle, which was beginning to cool. The cooler mantle meant that when Rodinia split apart, most likely no later than 750 million years ago, the plates didn't melt and constantly stuck together. It is possible for various rock fragments to collide, creating rift valleys and subduction zones. Because there is undeniable proof of deep subduction, some geologists claim that this marks the beginning of modern plate tectonics. For instance, they have discovered metamorphic minerals that could only have formed under intense pressure deep within the Earth's mantle. And that wasn't possible under the earlier theory of plate tectonics when the plates were still thin and brittle. Therefore, experts are still debating whether the period of subduction prior to the onset of plate tectonics actually counts as the beginning of it. Some people believe that there may have been evidence of tectonic movement as long ago as 4 billion years ago. However, they all concur on one point. Plate tectonics played a role in shaping the Earth into a habitable place. Supercontinents like Rodinia split up into smaller fragments, which brushed against one another, collided or drifted apart. Oceanic ridges are created when two plates diverge. These are mountain ranges under the sea where hot magma emerges, cools and joins the plates. This is referred to as seafloor spreading. Seafloor spreading is currently occurring in a number of ocean basins, and oceanic ridges are among the best locations to observe hydrothermal activity, which takes place when water interacts with the hot, fresh ocean crust. These vents are a home to a wide variety of life forms because they are rich in iron and silica, two essential nutrients for many different types of life. Constant creation of new habitats and destruction of existing ones by shifting plates makes it simple for life to change rapidly. Researchers have discovered that biodiversity expands rapidly as continents are further divided. Additionally, the arrangement of the continents can influence many other factors that influence life on Earth, such as the climate, the movement of carbon, and the motion of the oceans. Therefore, it appears that the boring billion wasn't at all boring. The Earth was just settling in and preparing for its upcoming major movement. So, what are your thoughts on boring billion? Sound off in the comments below. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up and smash the subscribe button so that you will never miss any updates.